In this video, I'm going to go through the basic features of the RBH Integrate 32 system. I'm going to start by launching the software, entering my username and password. I'm going to maximize the screen to make it a little bit easier to work. I'm going to start with the most common task, adding and editing card holders. You're going to want to go to the cards button here on the top. This will take you to a screen where you'll see all your card holders. You can click the right and left arrows to scroll between card holders. You can also press the search button to search for a specific card holder. Um, you can search uh, based on different criteria. For this example, I'm going to choose last name. You don't have to enter the entire last name. You can enter a partial and hit search. Uh, here I found the card holder. I'm going to double click it and now I can see all the cards and the access levels associated with those cards. Um, if we were going to be adding a new card holder, we want to hit new. Uh, we have to enter a first and last name. Uh, after entering the first and last name, you're going to want to enter the card. The number will usually be on your card. Just going to enter a random number. Um, the name is an optional field. If a card holder is going to have multiple cards, you can give it a name. But again, this is an optional field. I'm going to press OK. Uh, by default, the card is not going to have any access level. So you're going to want to associate a specific access level with that card. Um, after entering the card, you can press save to save the changes. Uh, if you want the card to deactivate a certain date, you can enter the activation date here. Uh, if you want a limited number of uh, uses for that card, you can enter the usage count here. Um, by default, 255 is going to give you unlimited uses. Um, if you want to deactivate the card, let's say that um, we terminated somebody, uh, we could uh, choose to inactivate the card here. Um, this is a new card holder we're adding, so I'm just going to uh, press save, and you're going to see that the card uh, is being downloaded to the uh, panel. That's what this log is back here. Okay. Now, um, if I wanted to edit a card holder, I would first uh, search for that card holder, either by scrolling left and right, or by using the search option like we did earlier. When you find the card holder that you want to edit, you're going to hit the edit button. And here you can add another card or remove an existing card or change the card's access level, etc. Once you're done making your changes, you're going to hit the save button. I really want to start with uh, the, the most common um, uh, settings here. So um, after uh, editing card holders, a really common thing is changing an access level. So I'm going to go over here under configure to access levels. Um, I'm going to click on an access level just to show you how these access levels work. First, they have a name. Um, then they have a uh, uh, a set of doors that they have access to. So for this particular access level, you can see that uh, there are a group of doors that they never have access to. So this Bergen access level never has access to the Briarwood doors or the Hancock doors, but it does have access to the main entrance and vestibule at Bergen. Um, so on the left-hand side, you'll see the reader. This is the door. On the right-hand side of the schedule, this is, this is the time that this uh, access level has access to that door. Show you another example with Hancock. You'll see Hancock has access always to the Hancock doors, but never to the other building doors. Uh, the master level is a default access level that you can't edit, and as you imagine, it has access to all the doors. If you want to add a new access level, you're going to right click on the access levels, click Add Access Level. By default, it'll have the name New Access Level. You can change the name here, and you can choose what doors this access level has access to. By default, there won't be any. Press OK. That access level is going to save. Next, I'd like to show you an unlock schedule. So you may want to have a door automatically unlock during a given period of time. So the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, create a schedule for that door. 
Uh, so I right click on schedules and I click add schedule, which is going to create a new schedule here, uh, similar to the uh, previous access level example. I'm going to give this schedule a name. You want to give it a logical name. Um, it's going to be for the door, so I'm going to call it door schedule. And uh, it's also nice if you put in the name the hours that the uh, um, that, that the schedule will be uh, to make it easier uh, down the line when you're selecting the schedule. So let's say the door is going to be unlocked from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I'm going to go to the time zone, um, and we're going to choose 9. This is going to be in a military format, so I'm going to choose 9 to 5. This is going to be Monday to Friday. Uh, so now I have this uh, schedule. Uh, from 9 to 5 Monday through Friday. Um, if um, you needed a little more advanced schedule, like let's say there's a lunch break or something in between, uh, we might want to use multiple periods. So I'll give you an example where there would be a lunch break uh, in between where the door is locked. So I'm going to go 9 to 12. Then I'm going to go 1 to 5. We're still Monday to Friday. I'm going to press OK and save this schedule. Uh, next thing we want to do is assign this schedule to a door. So I'm going to go to a reader. Let's say we wanted this. Uh, schedule to be applied to the Briarwood main entrance. I'm going to go to Networks, Panels, Find My Access Point. This is the access point I want to apply the schedule to. I'm going to go to Properties. I'm going to go to Modes, and I'm going to choose the Unlock Schedule we just created. A common option for Unlock Schedules is a first in option. So what that means is that the door will not unlock until the first person comes in for the day. Um, this is useful if in a business there's a snow day or there's some uh, a holiday where um, the office is closed and you don't want the door to automatically unlock. If you have a first in option, what will happen is that unlock schedule will not take effect because nobody came in for the day. So your unlock schedule would only take effect after the first person comes in for the day. I'm going to show you where that option is. If you go to modes, you'll see there's a checkbox here, first person delay. So this means that uh, this particular unlock schedule, um, the door will not open at 9 a.m. Uh, it will unlock when the first person comes in at 9 a.m. or later. Once that person comes in, the door is going to unlock and stay unlocked until 5 p.m. I'm going to put this back. Next, I'm going to show you how to manually open and close doors, so lock and unlock doors. If we go over here to Readers, we're going to see a list of our doors. It's also going to show us the status of the door, so all of these doors are locked. If I wanted to uh, grant access, so that's going to be... Uh, 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 an unlock a uh, short period of time. So if the door was set for eight second unlock, let's say, and I press grant access, that door is going to unlock for eight seconds and then lock. Um, if I wanted to leave the door unlocked until I manually lock it again, I could right click on the door and go to unlock. That will keep the door unlocked uh, until I send another lock command. Uh, then obviously to lock the door, we're going to right click on the door and go to lock. So that's how you manually uh, lock and unlock doors. If you just want to let someone in real quick, door grant access. If you need the door unlocked for the whole day, uh, you're going to want to do an unlock door. The last thing I want to show you are reports. Um, if we go over here to reports, we have two options. Uh, the, the reporting option you're going to be using is history report. Uh, once you go to history report on the top left, there's a drop down where you can select the report that you're looking for. Um, there's various ports here. If we go to card holders, it will run reports on specific card holders. If we go to access points, we'll run 
reports on specific doors, those are going to be the most common reports you're going to be running there. Some other reports here are also um, going to show you in a, an access point report. So an access point is a door. By default, all the doors are selected for this report. I'm going to choose a single door. If I wanted to see all the activity uh, going in and out of the Briarwood main entrance, uh, I would uh, select that door and then choose the date range. I'm going to choose two days. Uh, then I'm going to press preview. It's going to run the report. And I'm going to maximize this. And here you can see we have the activity on the top left, I can choose the day, so this would be 18th, this would be 17th. If I wanted to export this report, I can click on the export option. It's going to ask me what format. I can do PDF or I can export it in an Excel format. Those would be the most common formats. I'm going to choose PDF, press OK, and uh, it's going to ask me all the, how many pages. I'm going to choose all the pages, and here I can give it a name. I'm going to save it to the download folder, press save, and there you go, the report's been exported, we go to downloads, we're going to see the report there. Actually, it looks like I saved it to the desktop, so I'm going to go to the desktop real quick, and there's the report on the desktop. Uh, that completes this video. Thank you.